yeah, let's uh, get right into this thing. Okay. How would you describe what exactly it is that you do or uh, maybe what you talk about on your YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah. So I am an angel channeler. Um, some people have different ways of describing their, themselves as a psychic. Um, but what I do is I specifically connect with the archangels, the angelic realm, and I share messages that are given to me by the angels. And that's one of the things that I do. This also um, plays a part in the in how I do readings as well. So I do readings for people where if they're seeking clarity on something or guidance or um, want me to look at a particular area in their life or are just curious what their angels have to say, then um, that's also something that I share with them as well. So I'm able to connect with other people's angels because we all, each and every one of us has a team of angels, a team of light. Um, regardless of whatever higher power you believe in, we are all always guided by light. And it's up to us to welcome that in, to connect with that. And sometimes people are seeking that connection or may not even know they have that connection. And one of my intentions is to help people come back to that remembrance that we're not here alone on the earthly realm. We actually have so much support by the spiritual realm, which is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the things that I do. And then I am also a Reiki healer. So um, Reiki is a energy healing modality, and it was passed on. It was discovered by Mikao Usui. And this is an energy healing that really allows people to, it ignites healing within others, but it also is something that can be, be used for physical ailments, for emotional, um, any emotional turmoil, trauma. It, it truly is allowing light to enter your body and bring to light what still needs to be healed and also release that. There's so many different things that Reiki can be used for. And it has truly changed my life. So, um, yeah, that's something that I also do. I, I share this healing modality on my channel as well. Um, and what else do I do? And I, then I just talk about spirituality, too, because um, my spiritual journey, my spiritual awakening journey has been has been crazy. I mean, I, I'm trying to find like the best word to describe it, but it's, it's been crazy. It's been enlightening. That's the point as well. Um, and I have experienced some of the wildest things in the, all that I'm grateful for, but it, it has been wild. Um, and so with all the wisdom that I've gained, uh, I want to be able to share this with others because I remember at the beginning of my spiritual journey, I was looking for answers and I, I was trying to find something that just resonated with me. And I think it's so important to be able to find whether it's a YouTuber or um, a content creator, whoever it is that resonates with you, where their energy just feels like, okay, I can listen to this person. And even though I don't exactly understand what they're saying, it just feels good in my heart. And one day, maybe I will understand or this is a guiding light for me right now. So it's going to help me stay in alignment with my soul's path because I don't feel alone just by listening to this person's video or just by listening to this person's experience because some part of it resonates with me. Some part of it is, is helping me navigate through whatever I'm navigating through right now. So that's also something why I'm so passionate about sharing and, and speaking with others too. That's awesome. Yeah, the internet allows us to do that is to um, relate to others, find the others, as Tim Leary yeah. would say. And yeah, uh, yeah that's so special. <clears throat> Finding these non local communities to connect with, it's very special. As they say in Buddhism, it's the Buddha, the Dharma, and last but not least, the Sangha that we need in order to um, follow this path. So, yeah, the internet allows us to establish the Sangha past the point of locality. And it's so beautiful. It really is to be able to do that and to just simply do this, too. Literally what we're doing right now, you're halfway mm -hmm. across the world and yeah. we're having this conversation. Like, it's, um, it really is a miracle, but it doesn't seem like it because we have this technology in our pockets at all times. So we take it for granted. But when you really sit down and think about, what we're able to do and what we're able to share. Um, 
it's, it's miraculous. The times that we're in and the capabilities that we have because of the technology, if used yeah. correctly, is truly a miracle. Absolutely. I fully, fully agree with that. Right. <laughs> so when did you first start to tap into the angels and how exactly do you tap into the angels you know how do you communicate yeah. is it verbal is it more like this intuitive thing how would you describe your relationship to the angels yeah well they are truly truly some of my best friends <laughs> um and as far that's a great question i mean people are always like well how how do you connect with them? what what does that look like what does that feel like um, and if I could share, I, I would want everybody to be able to feel how I feel when I connect with them. And do you think everybody we can? Has, yes, absolutely. Everybody has the ability to do so. It's just one really opening up your heart to that mm -hmm. because the ego will try to resist um, connecting with the higher power of, of whatever your own understanding is. Yeah. But once you move through that and you feel that support, it is truly like no other but I was, I've always been connected to the angelic realm. Ever since I was little, I was able to sense energy, feel energy, see energy to the point where there were times when I was even a little, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie. There were times when I was scared of what I was seeing, even, even though it wasn't scary. It was just, it was like, okay, is anybody else seeing this or is it just <laughs> me? Yeah. Um, and as I had, I had different experiences when I was a kid where it would just feel so magical. I remember very, very clearly sitting in my parents' bed and just feeling this angelic energy all, all over me. And I didn't know it was angelic energy because as a kid, you're not trying to um, put a label on whatever you're experiencing. Um, for me, I'm just like, wow, this feels magical. I can feel and see light all over me. Um and looking back on it now, I knew it was me just hanging out with my angels. And I also, as a kid, was a very, a lot of children are very powerful manifestors where they'll wish for something and it'll just come. And this is because our subconscious mind hasn't already been um, brainwashed by society to, yeah. to have limiting beliefs. So manifestation is a lot easier when you're a kid. Um, so with this experience as a when I was younger, as I got older, the veil was really put over me and I lost that magic, I would say, for quite some time because I entered into society and uh, the programming that comes with society. And then in my early 20s, I, I was navigating through a really tough time. And that is when I had my spiritual awakening is what many would call it. And mine was truly an overnight awakening where I was really at one of the lowest I had ever been in my life. And I woke up to this remembrance. I was driving in my car and all of a sudden it was almost like somebody took my face and was like, click, click, click. And I kept seeing symbols everywhere. And then I saw angel numbers, a bunch of people see angel numbers. That is be a beautiful thing. That's a, a way of how the universe communicates to us. But I started seeing, um, these numbers everywhere, 111, 222, 333, 444. It was almost like, it, it was almost like somebody plucked me out of and just like put me somewhere else. And, and I was, the veil was lifted over me. And I thought I was going crazy for a second. And it's like, I need to turn around and go back to my apartment. And so I just remember going back to my apartment and I was like, whoa, okay, what is happening here? Um, and at that time I wasn't like, angel like talking to my angels like angels what's what's happening here i was literally like is what is what is going on and so i went online and <laughs> i just started doing some major research and i was like oh my god i'm not the only one that's experiencing this and so once i got myself into a rabbit hole of reading about all these things even though it didn't, some of it i was like this is crazy what what is happening yeah it resonated so deeply and the word spiritual awakening kept coming up and I was like, this is exactly what it feels like. Um, and then I was brought back to remembrance of when I was a kid and remembered all of these times that I had connected to my angels and the feeling felt so familiar that I was 
it's literally like, oh my goodness, they're right beside me. I can feel them. I can sense them. Um, the, the way that I sense them, this took a lot of in t- development on my own part, is they guide, first they guided me to do meditation. And this was an intuitive thing. It also showed up in synchronicities where the word meditation would pop up everywhere. And that's why it's so important to just be present and aware with what is coming up in your life. And I resisted it at first because at that time I was diagnosed with ADHD. I was drinking like seven cups of coffee a day. And I knew that I knew this wasn't who I was. I'm not that person that like I I can focus without taking medication. And I knew that was part of my soul's expansion as well. And so they guided me to meditation and I got this inner nudge to just quit taking anything that was disturbing my own natural flow of energy and um, how I would, how, yeah, how the body just works naturally. Um, And it was hard, but I just knew deep down that I could do it. And so I stuck with meditation every day. And there were times when I fell asleep and I was like, this sucks. I don't, I don't know why I'm doing this. Why am I doing this? This makes no sense. Um, but I kept going. And after about a month, I, it finally clicked for me where the, it was the most beautiful feeling I had ever experienced from just meditating. And I was able to access this state of bliss and just being just by being. And it, it was so powerful to where I wanted to just sit in meditation all day. I was like, what? Why do we even need to do anything else if I can access this state of happiness and joy being right here in this moment? And I could feel myself connect to source energy and my angels beside me. And that is when I truly felt the presence of angels, like truly, truly knew and knew how to distinguish that this was angelic energy. So I could feel and, and see colors all over me. And that's also how angels will present themselves as well is through colors because um, they want us to be able to sense, to feel, and they all correlate to certain different areas of our life as well. Um, but ever since then, my intuitive abilities have just continued to strengthen. And the more that I've listened to divine guidance and my intuition, the more these gifts have expanded to where I can see certain things now where my I'm also clairvoyant where things will um, show up if I close my eyes or if I focus um, and it, am in tune enough, then things will come through. But a lot of my gifts come through inner knowing and clear cognizance. So yeah, that's that's how I sense and feel the angels and and it's my relationship with them, which is quite beautiful because they. It definitely guided me on my most aligned path. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So would you recommend simple meditation practice? Mm-hmm. If anyone is actually interested in tapping into the higher self or their angels, you'd recommend yeah. just incorporating meditation into one's life? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I think meditation yeah. will would help anybody regardless of yeah, what you want. To connect with your angels or or your higher self um i feel like meditation is a great way to just come back to this awareness and remembrance of who you are but specifically if you want to for anybody that wants to connect with your team of light their angels it's important to actually welcome that in so even saying it out loud saying what your intention is out loud of i intend to connect with my guardian angel or my team of light or my angels that are here for my highest good and highest of timelines whatever it may be and the more that we actually welcome that support in the more it has that space to come in because Mm -hmm. something with the angelic realm is that they honor our they respect our free will because they want us to also be on that path of okay like I, i actually want this or i'm curious about it I'm going to welcome it in. They're never going to impede on our own earthly journey unless unless we're in an, in an unsafe situation where they have to. But for us to welcome in that support, we have to state it out loud too. Oh, I see. Yeah, the power of the word. Mm. Yes. Very, very yeah. Powerful. 
So let's explore this a little bit. Yeah. Where do you think the angels are guiding us? What is the plan? So if there is a higher guidance, there has to be somewhere or something they're guiding us towards. So is there like an archetype for humanity that the angels are guiding us to in a general sense? I know it may be hard to describe because we each have our own journeys here, right? Mm -hmm. But if we could try to describe what the plan is, uh, what is the plan for humanity with the angels would you say would you be able to describe yeah. that or articulate that yeah yeah that's also a really really good question i know so, it's a big one <laughs> yeah that's a big one i feel like i could i could talk a lot about this i would say that the main intention of just even having that angelic guidance and what they're guiding us towards is one fulfilling our soul's mission and everybody's soul soul's mission is going to incorporate some some aspect of bringing light to our earth mm -hmm. well however that may look like whether it be being a really good mom or whether it be starting a podcast but following what feels good for your soul um and helping helping um the earth carry more light because we are in the midst of a lot of polarity a lot of contrast and the main thing is, is that each person is meant to contribute to the, ex to expanding the consciousness of humanity in some way, somehow. Yeah. And that is always going to be through the portal of love. And that's what angelic energy is. It's reminding us all to come back to love and to um, tap into that energy to, sh to share with humanity, however that may look like. So some people's missions are going to be bigger than others, or some um, no mission is is ever least important or more important. It's just a matter of how that is coming through for each soul. So as far as as far as receiving that guidance, it's really about listening to your intuition and what feels right for you. So honoring your truth and honoring what lights you up inside and what feels good for your soul to to work towards is going. To be that way of attracting even more angelic energy and angelic guidance because that's what they want for us is to be able to shine our light as much as possible um, and to be able to walk the path that feels most aligned for us and sometimes that's going to take a lot of initiations or a lot of healing work to be done because through releasing what no longer serves us and shedding that ego that keeps us in this dense 3d energy that is where the, the biggest transformation happens is when we actually connect back to that 5D energy of um, the new earth. And the new earth is really being able to let our gifts come through and shine, coming back to the remembrance of who we are as souls, which we are multi-dimensional beings here to, here to make an impact in some way, somehow. Amen to that. Yeah, so bringing light forth to the world would you say in a way that is like shedding light upon who we really are all together mm -hmm. as in in our own way we work with the collective to usher in the consciousness of the collective right yeah and yeah. that is the darkness that we're currently living under unfortunately or maybe fortunately, maybe that's just part of the plan, how it's supposed to be, depending on how you look yeah. at it. But the darkness that the light is shed upon essentially is our ignorance of who we truly are and how we're all in this together, right? Yes, yes. It really is thinking about it um, as a whole. Because yeah. if you out of everything, yeah, of course, we can really focus on our own mission. But when you actually tap into why your mission is meaningful in the first place that is where every you find that every single thing is connected whether mm -hmm. it be somebody to smile at on the street or whether it be somebody that you have on a podcast that impacts somebody else or a conversation that you have today that just lights your soul up every single thing is connected and when we think about it as a whole we are all truly family we yeah. are children of the earth we are children of the light and it's up to us to reconnect with that because that is the most beautiful feeling in the world when we do. Yeah. 
<laughs> to say the least, we're children of the light. Truly, we are light. We are literally light beings. We've all heard that. We are light workers, but that that actually is <laughs> what we are. That is not just yeah. some new age buzzword that is thrown out there. No, like literally what <laughs> we are is slow moving light <laughs> in a way. Yes. Oh, I love that. Yeah. 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 And it's such a miracle to realize that. And uh, it actually doesn't even make logical sense. That's why it's so hard to wrap one's mind around and to anyone listening to this that doesn't know any better. Like, what are these people talking about? Are they crazy? No, right? we're, we're actually light. And that's <laughs> wild. And it's wild. We can work with this light and bring forth. Because it's, it's funny because we talk about it in a metaphor, like shining light in the darkness of ignorance of yeah. who we are. But no, like literally we are in a way working with light to bring about a new like realm like a new earth yeah, and exactly. um yeah that's uh like hallelujah man that's 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 very special when one feels that and knows that oh. that is the truth uh yeah you can't unfeel it you can't unsee it right you can't unsee the light and then mm -hmm. from there i guess you just start to work through um your samskaras as, as they say our uh, our karma in order to yeah. be a better conductor of the light in one's life, right? And yeah. that is that is intuitive. I think you mentioned that before. Yeah. The mm -hmm. whole path of spirituality, I feel, or just life in general, following a good life is very intuitive. If one knows mm -hmm. how to silent the mind, yeah, one will hear the whispers of intuition guide you yeah. along yeah. your life. And... Um, yeah, it's quite simple in that way. Might not be yeah. easy. It might be crazy, as you stated that your <laughs> your path has been. But it's simple in the way that, like, once you know where to tap in or how to tap in, it's easily um, what's the word replicable. You know, you know how to do it, sort of in like a science. And mm. the basis mm -hmm. is meditation. If you just know yeah. how to meditate, disconnect from the drama, all the goings yeah. on of the illusion yeah. of Maya, all the craziness of the world and just come into the stillness, the peace within, you'll be able yeah. to hear that. The whispers of the light, the yes. whispers of the light. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Hey man, it might sound crazy. Like I said, to people that have no idea, but I think to people that do have an idea and that yeah. do feel it within their life, they're like, yep, preaching to the yeah. choir. <laughs> yeah, and I also want to to share with anybody that's listening that is like, what on earth are Gary and Lizzie talking about? There is still a reason why you were guided to to listen to this this episode. Nothing happens by coincidence, mm -hmm. and it may not make sense right now. One day you will look back on this and be like, wow, this this actually resonates now. Um, I truly, truly do believe that because I've been in the same position where I was just looking up um, videos on YouTube and just hearing what people were saying and could feel the frequency of what they were saying, like their energy. But I had no idea what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. There were times I was also like, uh, I don't know if I'll ever have any idea, but I'm so glad that I still just played it, whether it was in the background or anything, because now it all makes sense. <laughs> it yeah. really does. Yeah. 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 <sighs> I don't even know what to say to that, to be honest. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, it's truly a changing of one's paradigm, a changing of perspective. It's almost like I like to describe it going from entropy to momentum, a way mm -hmm. of looking at the world of like, why is this happening to me? Woe is me, the world's against me, to how is this happening for me? How can I transmutate this energy into um, uh, a better life altogether, a greater good for myself and everyone in the world? Yeah, it's real. It's real, and um, yeah, it's. Uh, it might not. I'm not perfect. I'm not always on that wavelength. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but it's very easy to tap into that. It's very easy to remind oneself that, like, that's the truth. You know that that is that the universe actually is conspiring for your own good your angels are actually yeah. there they're always available for you you yeah. don't even have to call it angels right would you yeah. agree like yeah. you could call it the higher self you could call it god yeah. call it the yeah. force the universe 
but there's like something that's guiding us along that wants to help out essentially you just got to open your door you just got to be available and invoke it in a way in one's life yes all of that yes 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 um (laughs) you do not have to you do not have to say specifically angels literally whatever resonates best in your heart you can call it the light or it's truly just about connecting to a higher power of your own understanding and that could be anything it could be a flower. <laughs> it mm. could be nature, Mother Gaia, Mother Earth, anything that allows you to just feel that sense of something greater than you that has your best intentions at heart. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say that is the essence of a quote, spiritual awakening is waking up to the fact that there's a little bit more going on than meets the eye and that there is actually this higher wisdom this higher guidance that is moving us along here, the Tao, another label maybe you could use that one can sync up with and thus um, manifest a a new life and actually be happy. (laughs) Yes, yes, that's what I do feel. That's what a a spiritual awakening is. And because the universe and whatever God, whatever higher power you believe in, just wants you to be happy yeah that's why people are sometimes you may go through some really intense situations in your life to wake up to these things to wake up to knowing or even wanting to discover something more um because it joy is our birthright happiness is our birthright feeling the light is our birthright so it's really this journey of coming back to remembrance with that is that it was never gone. It's just connecting back to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's funny. Well, I don't know if it's funny, but it's peculiar <laughs> in the way where we have to go through darkness. We have to suffer in order to transcend our suffering, in order to know that there is a way out of suffering. And it's through perspective. You know, like yeah. um, you said you went through uh, tumultuous times during your awakening, your early 20s or something like that. Well, that while you're in the midst of it, you're probably like, what the heck is going on? But now you could probably say you're eternally grateful for all of that to happen, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I, this is a really good, I think this is also um, such an important conversation to have around that aspect of suffering when it comes to the earthly journey suffering sounds it sounds terrible i mean yeah. and just that word in general but um we don't have to i mean we don't even have to call it suffering it's really just or we could because the reality of it is it does feel terrible sometimes maybe you can say However, resistance yeah it could be resistance but there yeah i mean everybody's earthly journeys some are are more hefty than others and yeah. some literally feel like you're at the brink of death and that's physically what was happening to me too so yeah i mean there's there's times when in my early 20s i went through an intense intense time it was a very very dark time but also in my mid 20s i also went through a really dark time and i was like is this is this really happening to me where i even questioned my angels and i was like if I'm meant to be a light worker, why on earth is this happening to me? Because there was a point where I was at, I went through a really intense health journey to where uh, it was debilitating. It was physically, emotionally, and spiritually debilitating. And I honestly questioned what I was even doing here anymore. Mm. But that shift in perspective, like you said, I knew there was a purpose. I knew there was a reason, even though my ego was like, you should just give up at this point. Mm -hmm. My ego was really like, I think it would be better actually to, to, it may be better to give up than to continue moving forward at this point, because that's how bad it got with my health. Um, But in my determination to connect back to the light, that is what saved me. And that's also what kept me going. And, even the slightest sliver of just trying to connect to the light again, no matter what you're going through and asking yourself, shifting that perspective, like you said of, okay, what is this teaching me? How, what can I take from this and how can I move 
through this with grace, even if it is freaking painful. And in some, and sometimes they not even feel fair um, because we are human after all in this, in this world. So things are going to feel very personal sometimes. It's like, what is this like an attack on me? Like, mm -hmm. why am I going through this? Um, but being able to shift that perspective and be like, okay, something is going to come from this. I can't exactly pinpoint what it is right now, but I'm determined to make it through and I will make it through. That is so important in just knowing that whatever you're going through, whatever darkness you're experiencing, it truly is always happening for you, even if it doesn't feel that way sometimes. Yep. And I can full on say, looking back on everything, yeah, there are some things that I'm like, I I don't know if I would wish that that, that would have happened, but I'm grateful that it did yeah. because it's got me to where I am today. Yep. Amen. Yeah. Have faith. Yes. Faith is powerful. Would you say that led you to a, mm, that's what I'm looking for, a realization of I got to surrender, surrendering your ego in a way and giving it up to the light? Like, do you think that is also part of a spiritual awakening is realizing that um, you don't have it all under control, like giving up a little bit of control? Yes. Control is, is a working of the ego. Um, yeah. And there is a huge part of the journey as well is, is also accepting that we may not know everything oh, yeah. <laughs> and accepting that maybe, maybe this path that you're currently on that may logically seem right actually isn't the best highest path for you and that your angels or the universe knows what's going to fulfill you the most and also knows what you signed up for when you became before you reincarnated here in the earthly realm. Um, so surrendering to that flow of life, like the natural cycle of life is, is a huge part of this earthly journey so that we are not resisting what's actually meant for us. Mm -hmm. Because the more that we try to control, the more that we try to resist what is actually aligned for us, the more painful it gets because that pain is actually rerouting you back to your most optimal timeline. And that pain is there as a catalyst for you to ascend, truly. Um, so surrendering is, is very, very important in yeah. the journey. Amen to that. Oh, man. This is a good talk. This is good. It is. It is. Yeah, you're uh, asking some, some great questions. My crown chakra is like buzzing right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, where do we go from here? Let's see. Do you have any like specific uh, teachers or paths that you followed or books that you would recommend? You know, like what is your what is your background, I guess? What is my background? Um, so as far as teachers, to be completely honest, my angels, the archangels in particular, have been some of my biggest teachers. So like literally you the intuitive guidance is your teacher. It, yes, mm -hmm. hugely. But they have also guided me into reading material that is for my highest good. And um, a lot of the spiritual journey is also, also being open to reading and taking in material that lights up your soul, that ignites your soul. Yeah. Like, so immersed in it. I'm like, wow, this is enlightening for me and enlightenment is a beautiful feeling when you feel like your consciousness is expanding that's what our angels want for us um but as far as any particular authors that i would say have been a, a huge pivotal part of my journey is Eckhart Tolle is mm -hmm. is a big one um uh i feel like Gabby Bernstein Gabrielle Bernstein is a huge one as well um Lorna Byrne, who is um, somebody that is also very, very in the angelic space. She was a huge part of what helped me. She was a huge light in what helped me stay connected to the light when I was going through a really tough time with my health. That was probably one of my biggest ways of strengthening my connection to the angelic realm. And thinking about it even makes me a little emotional because that your angels can help you through anything. They truly, truly can. Um, I'm trying to think of any other particular authors. Yeah, I feel Michael A. A. Singer. 
um, The Untethered Soul. That's also a beautiful book. Um, and all with the, all with that shared intention of helping us distinguish what is the ego and shedding these layers of ourselves that's just causing pain for no reason when we're just listening to the ego like it really is creating this barrier of us connecting with our heart our soul's guidance yeah um so the ego is is a <laughs> an interesting thing um but when we learn how to distinguish it and be discerning of what is the voice from our ego versus our soul. That is one of the most transformative experiences ever. Yep. I think that is really where the spiritual awakening alludes to is yeah. the ego going from the master to the servant. When yeah. before yeah. it was the master, right? And your higher self was sort of serving the ego in a way. Mm. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's where it ends up, right? You don't actually kill the ego. You just know how to utilize it better and know what to listen to. Know to listen to the intuition first and the ego second. Or maybe just don't even listen. Just kind of like know that it's there. Know that there, <laughs> there always is the egotistical inclinations of the human condition. Yeah. But yeah. to know that it doesn't hold power and that you're not the ego. That there are there is a higher guidance, a higher wisdom within yeah and to listen to yeah. that and be guided by that i think that's really where um spiritual awakening leads to in someone's life you know it's like you get the i like to say it's like a two-step process you get the glimpse you get the realization you see it you see the light and then you work with the light it's just another way of saying it and working with the light is the higher wisdom and knowing yeah. that you you do have that within at all times beautifully said. Thank you. <laughs> I think that's the basis of really all belief systems in their pure essence, not the dogma, is surrendering your ego to God. It yes. really is. It's that simple. It's surrendering your idea of control, surrendering mm -hmm. uh, the horrible rituals that the ego has built up for you, the almost parasitic nature that the ego has built up for us. Yeah. The, um, yeah, just like the animalistic tendencies that the ego builds, the kind of competitiveness to the ego, the like, I, I could go on and on, but it's just like, right. it's not conducive to cooperation. It's not conducive to uh, us being here together. It's very isolating and it's kind of gross, <laughs> to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. It's a very gross way of living. And it's so artificial. It's so like once one does get the glimpse, it's like, oh, it's it's just like, oh, God, man, it's just gross. I don't know. It's very repulsive once one knows the truth. And that's yeah. the thing is, though, it's like it doesn't disappear overnight. Like the, like I said, it doesn't. You still got to work with it. Like there's still stuff that pops up in my life where it's like, oh, there it is. Just when I think I'm the holy man, I got it all figured <laughs> out. The yeah. ego pops up, someone cuts me off in traffic, or it's just, yeah. just stuff happens. You know, stuff happens in our life. And yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I think it's important to note that Rome wasn't built in a day. This whole process is uh, something that is like uh, the journey is the destination. There's the cliche right there. Yeah. Truly. Yeah. Truly. Yeah. And, and recognizing that, I think, uh, allows us to forgive. And forgiveness is actually like the ego's worst enemy. <laughs> you know what I mean by that? Yeah, yeah. Because there's a lot of vulnerability that comes with forgiveness and also uh, the dissolving of the ego <laughs> of, of whatever. Um, yeah, forgiveness is a huge part in setting yourself free. But also the big one of the highest acts of compassion is forgiving others. Yeah, well. if you give yourself and forgive others. That's what Jesus said. He told yeah. us. Nobody listened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a huge part of the the healing journey. And something that you said about um how yeah, we it's not like you your ego dissolves or you shed your ego and you're completely like, oh, I'm good, I'm enlightened. I don't ever it, it's actually very, very normal to have things come up with the ego as well because one we are human otherwise we just we wouldn't have reincarnated here and and decided to experience this earthly experience yeah and even 
having a good relationship with the ego where, like you said, it's not the master. It's actually you're you're the one looking at your ego and being like, yeah, no, you can quiet down today. Like this isn't actually something that I'm going to, I don't need this to be taken away from my energy today. Um, the ego does not need to take away from my power today, but there there's a healthy ego that we can really create that relationship with as well. So it's not about like, gosh, I hate my ego. It's like, okay, is my ego serving me at this time? Like sometimes it is a little bit good to have that drive of like, wanting to to pursue something and that would be like a healthy ego of like hey yeah. you, can, you can do a little bit more today mm -hmm. um and then there's times when it, it's taking away from us so really being able to distinguish is this serving me today or is it not yeah yeah very well said having a healthy balance a healthy ego it's good way yes. to put it yeah yeah mm. but right now on a collective level, it's a very unhealthy ego. <laughs> that's that's really the essence of um, the darkness that we mentioned we live in. It's just very unbalanced ego. And um, yeah, I don't know. I think uh, eventually we all will see the light. We'll work through the egotistical tendencies and habits. But mm -hmm. that's the thing is we got to work through it first to realize that that's not it. We got to uh, we got to reap the karma. And I think that's what's going on right now as we speak in the world. Yeah. Spiritually, collectively, it's a lot of very intense karma reaping. <laughs> but mm -hmm. it's all, I believe, and maybe this is my idealism speaking, it's all leading us toward a healthy ego, a healthy collective ego yeah. in the future. Yeah. Yes, definitely. I hope at least. <laughs> yeah i mean we could, it, it truly is i feel like there is a massive awakening happening in our collective something's going on right something's going so, on it's so exciting it feels so good and it's also why we were placed here in the first place yeah to be part of that ascension and to help others awaken to their true essence which is love amen yeah love and light synonymous Correct. right synonymous yeah. And it's love that goes beyond the word of love. And it's truly light that goes beyond the light we can see. That's the thing. Yeah. 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 That's really what we are. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Are we love or are we light? Or are they the same thing? Would you say they're I, the same thing? <laughs> I feel they, they are the same thing. And love is what helps us connect back to the light. You could be in the darkest of times, but even connecting back to your heart of the smallest thing that will get you to that vibration of love again will directly connect to connect you to the light and mm. that is what saves people that is truly what saves people yeah i like to say whatever brings one to the essence of unconditional love because that's the thing it's unconditional love <laughs> that's yeah. a huge key to mention whatever brings one toward unconditional love whether it's a person a hobby a book your dog <laughs> something you food yeah. i don't know whatever yeah. brings one closer to that essence go with that and it's different for yeah. all of us but it's all the same unconditional love yeah so yeah, yeah. go with that yeah that's definitely something that angels have taught me as well is that frequency of love of unconditional love is the frequency that manifests miracles into people's lives mm. it's manifest breakthroughs and it's because that is what we are meant to connect back to is love. The power that it can do is truly, tr I mean, the sky is the limit with what unconditional love can do, not just for your life, but for everybody that you come in contact with that also is able to connect with that frequency. Yeah. And it's almost contagious, right? I know I can feel yeah. it when somebody else is very loving. I'm like, ah. Oh they're sucking me in <laughs> yeah, it's like a virus yeah, in a way so <laughs> yeah 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 so love brings love love brings love truly hope that doesn't sound too corny but it's the truth it really is it's the truth <sighs> i mean that's a miracle in itself you said unconditional love brings miracles but just the dawning and realization that that is the truth that love actually is God. Yes. You know I mean, that's like, what? 
it's not yeah. fear it's yeah. not uh competition it's not dog eat dog me against the world nope yeah. what's really going on here folks is that <laughs> love is the truth unconditional love is really you could say the only thing that's real the only thing that lasts everything else is in transition yeah yeah love always was always is and always will be uh that's the truth <laughs> it's uh Absolutely. it's crazy man when that hits it hits you know when that hits yeah. you don't unsee that that is like something that enters one soul and I don't think it ever leaves, to be honest. Absolutely. When yeah. you can perceive life with love and really open your heart to that, your reality will reflect that. And mm. things that like you start to perceive will change too, because reality is just a reflection of what we feel internally. So when we shift back to love, even if it's just a little bit every day, the little things that we do every day compound over time, you yeah. know, start to take major in fact, on your life. Mm. Yeah, very true. It's very true. Oh, man. <laughs> All my talks always end up at this. They always end up at love is the truth. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. I mean, that's, it truly is. It truly is. Love is the answer as corny. That's not me sound. It really, really is. And it's definitely cliche and corny at this point, but hey, man, somebody's <laughs> got to say it. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. Honestly, I could do for this corny energy all day because <laughs> I know how much it's changed my life and those that I've, I've worked with and those that I've seen just out whoever love really will always be the answer. Mm. Now, did this hit you in like a certain moment? Like, how did this come about? And when did you realize this? Like, how did you realize this? Oh, my goodness. I would say it was um, my heart chakra awakening. So this was huge because I've always been one that ca has carried a lot of love for just people. I've always loved people, loved connecting with people. Um, but I would say that a true heart awakening that happened for me was when I was actually looking after one of my friend's dogs and, mm -hmm. um, and I've loved dogs to that time. Like I've, oh, I've always loved dogs, but this time I, I really looked at this animal as in a different way and I could just feel. And ever since that, I mean, leading up to that, I was already meditating, connecting with my angels and, and all this stuff. But um, when I was watching this dog, I was just observing the energy of the dog. And I was just like, how on earth is this? This is literally just love in a little fluffy form. Yeah. And this is going to sound really silly as well. But I remember taking this dog on a walk. And then I started to look at all the flowers and how everything is so perfectly just placed on our earth for us to connect back to love. And mm -hmm. that really when my heart chakra was, it was already open, but this time it expanded to the point where I literally felt like this energy just held me and the whole entire universe in the same frequency. Um, so I looked, it, it allowed me to, to perceive every single thing that I was looking at through the lens of love. And I feel like that was probably one of the most powerful things for me, the biggest shift. And it came to connecting with that animal in a different wow. way. Yeah. That's pretty unique. <laughs> I've never heard that before. That's pretty powerful though. Oh. Yeah. There's a reason why dog backwards is God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> true. That's true. Seems like that dog was uh, Buddha in disguise for you. It's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think that. But I think that we also have to be open to it as well. Being in that yeah. present moment. There's many times when I've looked after dogs in general and I didn't have that feeling. But for I was just so tuned in at this time. And it also took um, a level of wanting to connect as well that mm -hmm. allowed me open to my heart chakra expanding and opening wow it's beautiful oh thanks Garrett. <laughs> like you said you have to be open enough and if you are very open then 
you could see the guru in everything. That's really the goal is to have yeah. the teacher in everything and everyone, every dog lead you back to you. Yeah. That's, I believe, um, I don't know if you want to say goal, where this all leads to, or uh, the essence of the spiritual path, but everything really is the teacher. Everything is the guru leading one back to oneself. Yeah. Potentially. Potentially. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's life, love, and everything. Yeah. Wow. Um. Hey, you know what? I think that's a good note to wrap this thing up at. Uh, <laughs> do you have anything else you want to say? Anything you want to get off your chest for the pod? Mm -hmm. Well, I feel like I'm on a high right now because I just feel like through this whole conversation, we just reconnected to that frequency of of light, of unconditional love, and um, a purpose as well. So um, I feel that that this is a great place to 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 end. Um, because I feel great. <laughs> and I hope yeah. that the frequency, people who are listening to this can also feel that frequency. Too. <laughs> I hope so too. If nobody else, I feel it. <laughs> oh, good, good. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I thank you for coming on here, Lizzie. I think this was definitely an awesome conversation. Like you said, having conversations like this is very transcendent. Uh, mm -hmm. So I encourage anyone listening to to do this you don't have to actually record it and put it on youtube but just sit down and talk with somebody about stuff that isn't usually talked about you know actually just sit down put the phone away and just i don't know just talk about talk about life and see what happens yeah. and just flow with another person the power of doing that especially in person is very very psychedelic it will lead one toward a very natural high power of conversation yeah. this is the reason why i do it you know i don't do it for views clout to look cool on the internet i do it genuinely because this is my sadhana this is my spiritual practice to come on here with people and talk about the truth and uh try to learn something from the other person so i encourage anyone listening that has listened this long to try it out themselves find somebody yeah. that is like-minded find the others as we said in the beginning and then just talk and see what happens yeah. yes <laughs> Yeah, beautifully said. And it's been an honor having this conversation with you. I knew that it was going to be wonderful. So again, I, I feel so grateful that we were able to have this conversation together. Same. Uh, the mm -hmm. honor is mine to have you on here, truly. But I wish you all the best and um, peace and love to you and peace and love Thank to the listeners as well. Thank you. You as well. Bye, everybody. Peace.